I made it to the airport where the last words 28 year old Lars Mitank said to his relieved mom Sandra Mitank before he left all his belongings and sprinted out of the airport. He then climbed an 8 foot barbed wire fence and disappeared in a sunflower field. Mitank has been described as the most famous missing person on YouTube. The security footage of him running out of the airport had been viewed more than 16 million times by May 2018. But despite the widespread popularity of this case, Lars Mitank is still missing. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Mystery Inquest. My name is Veronica and this is my first ever video on this channel. If you are into true crime and mysteries, then hit the subscribe button and tickle the notification bell. <laughs> you know the drill. For my first case, I chose the disappearance of Lars Mittank because I have so many questions. Why did he run out of the airport? Was he chased or was it all in his head? Like so many of you, I'm so confused. How Lars could have disappeared in such inexplicable way? My heart goes out to all of his friends and family and especially to his poor mom Sandra who's still waiting for her son to come home. Okay you guys, get comfortable, grab your dog or a cushion because this is going to be a ride. If you don't have that much time, play it at double speed because I promise you I compiled the most up-to-date information about this case. So let's start at the beginning. Lars Joachim Mitank was born on February 19, 1986 and grew up in Itzeho in Schleswig-Holstein in Germany. He is an only child to his parents and he is described by those who knew him as a good person, a good friend. He's very athletic, he likes fishing, scuba diving. But the most favorite thing in the world for Lars was to support his favorite soccer club Werder Bremen and this will be important important later you guys. After he graduated he trained as a precision engineer and in 2007 he got a job as a power plant operator in Wilhelmshaven. I'm so sorry guys if I'm butchering any of the names. He felt lucky to be employed doing something he enjoyed. Overall Lars was described as a normal person who had friends, a girlfriend and a very close relationship with his parents. They grew even closer when his dad had a stroke in 2012 and Lars would travel home as much as he could to help his mom take care of him. On June 30th, 2014, Lars goes on all boys holidays to Varna, Bulgaria. And it's that kind of holidays where young people go and party. His mom Sandra was actually surprised that he would go on holiday like that because he preferred holidays like scuba diving and fishing and it wasn't his thing. And you guys, can you imagine that he wasn't even supposed to be on that trip. He took his friend's spot because his friend didn't get holidays from work, so Lars took his place. Welcome to Varna, a popular seaside resort and the third largest city in Bulgaria. Varna is an important center for business, transportation, education, tourism, entertainment and healthcare. Varna has a humid subtropical climate perfect for fun summer vacation. It is a favorite destination for young European party people. Golden Sands Resort has a similar vibe to Mallorca or Ibiza. At first, Lars and his friends enjoyed their all-inclusive stay in a four-star Viva Club hotel at Golden Sands. We had a lot of fun on the beach, partying in bars and watching football matches, said Lars's friend Paul Rohman. The friends spent most of the time on the beach, by the pool or in the bars all over Golden Sands. Lars also played football or soccer with some guys he met on the beach. His friends reported that he was happy and his usual self. Looking back, the only unusual thing was his eating habits. Tim and Paul reported Lars ate very little, usually no breakfast and only small salads or soups. He would also buy fruit on the beach. His friends thought it was strange because there was a lot of food available and it was already paid for. But maybe it was too hot for him to eat. And then on July 5th, which was the fifth day of their holidays, they went to a rock bar in Golden Sands to watch a football match between Costa Rica and Netherlands which was a quarterfinal in the 2014 World Cup that year. The kickoff was at 11 p.m. and everybody had such a good time at the bar. The atmosphere was amazing and they also had like these little flags on the table of their favorite club and Lars was wearing his favorite uh, club t-shirt, the Werder Bremen, and 
just everybody was having a blast. At one point, everybody was swapping these little flags they had on each table and everybody thought that was fun, except for a group of young Bavarian fans of a rival club and got very offended when their flag was swapped. They got into an argument with Lars, but luckily he managed to defuse the situation so everything was fine by the end of it. And then Lars and his two friends, Paul and Tim, left the bar at 4 a.m. It was already the next day, July 6th. His friends were hungry, so they decided to stop at a McDonald's. And Lars was like, nah, guys, I'm not hungry. I'm just gonna, like, wait over here. At first, I thought it was, like, weird. Why didn't he go with them inside the McDonald's? But apparently, it wasn't even a building. It was, like, open-air kiosk uh, McDonald's, which is weird i've never seen that before so he was just waiting over there like 60 feet away it only took a few minutes and tim and paul returned with their burgers and they're looking around like where the heck is lars like he's gone and they're wondering like where did he go did he just leave without us back to the hotel they thought it was so strange they get back to the hotel and there is no lars in there either but apparently they didn't worry too much they thought maybe he met somebody so they just waited. Fast forward to the next morning and there he was with a weird story. Even his best friends thought it was a bit strange. Basically, Lars told them that the soccer fans that he had this beef at the, at the bar hired some four either Bulgarians or Russians to beat Lars up. I mean, guys, what do you think? Like, this sounds so weird to me. But anyway, so he gets beaten up. He has a sore jaw and... His ear is pounding and he's like not feeling good at all because it was Saturday. So he's like, I'm going to wait till Monday to go to the doctor because they'll probably be closed on the weekend, which I think is also very strange. Like, why wouldn't you just go to an A&E? Before they knew it, the last day of their holiday rolled over. It was Monday, July the 7th, 2014, and Lars packed his bags and went to see a doctor. The pain in his ear, sadly, was not getting better and he wanted to make sure he could fly and also because he needed his earring to perform his job, so he was a little worried. The doctor diagnosed a ruptured eardrum and told Lars that he shouldn't fly home that day. He referred him to St. Anna's Hospital in Varna. His friends said, okay, we'll cancel our flights, we'll change it and we can all go together when you're better and he's like you know what guys i'm just gonna go to the hospital and i have my travel insurance so i'll get them to take me into the hospital and my travel insurance will transport me back to germany so i'm not even gonna fly with you guys so you might as well just go and his friends were like mm, okay in the hospital he sees a specialist he confirmed a ruptured eardrum and he says to lars lars you need to have an operation right now and lars is like no way i don't want to be operated on in both Bulgaria. I'm sorry, I don't mean any disrespect, but I want to be treated in Germany. I'm not surprised. Can you imagine being in a foreign hospital where you don't understand the language and they are doing something to you? You just want to be at home with your loved ones. So I understand that why he wanted to go to Germany. And the doctor, he's like laughing. He's like, you either go to the hospital and have the operation here or you just go. He gave Lars a prescription for antibiotics called Sevzil. 500 they are high dose antibiotics and he sent him on his way by this time you guys Lars was kind of freaking out I can imagine because he didn't expect this at all he was in a foreign country he was injured it was late at night after 10 o'clock he's like what am I gonna do now Lars took a taxi to a pharmacy to get his medication they didn't have his full prescription so he had to go to another pharmacy where they gave him the rest of the pills next he needed a place to stay but where like Varna in the middle of the summer everything is booked luckily the taxi driver told him about a cheap place that he knew so he took him there it's called Hotel Color it's a two-star hotel it was not a good place guys it's in a very bad area in Varna it's in a notorious Roma quarter called Maxuda it's shady as can be oh <laughs> Oh my god. I feel like I'm freaking there because it sounds so scary. Like, I feel so bad for Lars. When they got there, he spotted a little corner shop. So he's like, good, I'm going to get a drink there. But as soon as he got out, there were these guys that were giving him a side eye. He didn't want an another confrontation with anybody. So he went back to the hotel. He paid with his credit card. And you guys, he couldn't believe it. They photocopied his card. He's like... Why are they doing it? He's never seen it before. They probably want to steal his money. He goes upstairs in his room and he calls his mom for the very first time. And he's 
kind of talking like in a very low voice and he's telling his mom something weird is going on here he's like you have to cancel my cards because they are trying to rob me there are still some people after me i don't feel safe so please cancel my cards i have enough cash on me so i don't even need it i just want it to be safe i don't want anybody robbing me so she did it she canceled the cards he also asked his mother to arrange a patient transfer with the insurance company lars's mother started the claim and called him right back to let him know he shared that he was not feeling safe at the hotel. Lars's mother was so worried about her son that she booked a flight for the next day as well as a long distance bus just in case he was not allowed to fly. The flight was scheduled for 4.20 p.m. and the bus was booked for 11.30 p.m. on July 8th. She told him to try to calm down and urged him to get some rest before travel day. Lars got some water from the hotel and took his first Cefzeal tablet. But not long after that, Lars called her again, whispering into the phone that he really had to leave because the hotel was not safe. There was something very, very wrong. Surveillance cameras captured Mitang pacing in the hotel foyer, peering out of the windows, and at one point apparently hiding inside an elevator. Does that remind you of something, you guys? Finally, he left the hotel at about 1 a.m. Lars then called his mother between 2 and 3 a.m., and whispering into the phone, he told her he was chased again by four Bayern fans who called him a pregnant pig and a Nazi. He's so scared they're gonna kill him and he's hiding. Lars's mother said, quote, he was speaking quietly. He said he was in a hiding place, in a slightly higher place, and he had to be very careful. Of course, my throat is getting tight. And of course, my heart is telling me that something is wrong. For God's sake, my son is in danger. Unquote. Shortly after that, Sandra gets two texts asking what Cefzeal 500 was. He must have been concerned about his medication. He then called his mom again. He mentioned that they wanted his pills. He wanted to get to the airport in Varna to see a doctor there and again ask what exactly was the medicine he had been prescribed. The scary part of Lars's urgent and worrying phone calls was how abruptly his calls ended. She's scared to call him back. What if she calls him back and gives away his location? And so she anxiously waited to hear from her son. Finally, Lars called his mother at 6 a.m. to tell her that he made it to the airport. He was very happy and relieved to be there. He took a taxi there. The taxi driver later said that he saw Lars waving frantically trying to flag a taxi like he was like this like stop and he had a lady in there already but he stops anyways and takes him the lady and the taxi driver later said that Lars looked worried and scared and that he had dilated pupils Lars told his mother that he was heading to the airport doctor but he didn't have any money and his mom was like huh he told her a couple of hours previously to cancel his card because he had enough cash so how come he had no more money that was kind of strange to her. Lars told her they can use Western Union. Apparently, a Bavarian man he met at the airport told him about it. Sandra said she would do it. They never found this guy, you guys, and he is an important witness. I cannot imagine like if Lars was already going out of his mind that he was gonna get robbed and stuff, so why would he talk to a stranger about money and how he could have money from his mom. Isn't that weird? Who was this guy? If you are the man or if you know this man, please come forward because you might crack this case. You might have some important information. She then gave Lars his flight information as well as the bus info and urged him to write it down in case his phone died. Rather worryingly, Lars told her, quote, they won't let me fly nor drive, unquote. And that was before he saw the doctor. And he didn't specify who they were. Sandra was confused about this statement, but before Lars could clarify, he ended the call again. So Lars's mom sent him 500 euros by Western Union, and she was waiting for Lars to be done at the doctor's and call her back. But he never did. She's calling him, and he's not answering. He answered only once, and it sounded like, like mumbling sounds, and she just assumed that he must have accidentally answered it when he was in the bathroom. He didn't pick up his phone after that. After waiting too long for news from her son, Sandra made several attempts to contact the doctor's office at Varna Airport, but according to her, no one understood her. Later investigation revealed that Lars got to the doctor's office at around 9, 9.30 a.m. The exam took 42 minutes. The doctor took his temperature, which was 98.96 degrees Fahrenheit. It is not clear how the temperature was taken, if it was from under his arm, 
then this would be slightly elevated. If a thermometer was used under his tongue, however, the temperature would be normal. Nevertheless, the doctor made a note that his temperature was normal. Then the doctor administered eardrops in his affected ear. Dr. Kosta Kostov said Mitan questioned him about the antibiotic he was prescribed. He also said that Lars seemed to be nervous and erratic while at the office. The doctor explained, quote, he was obviously worried. Why? I can't say. He was worried even when he first came in. The first thing that made an impression was his suspiciousness towards us, unquote. It has to be said that this doctor's statements cannot be trusted 100% because according to the investigators, Dr. Kosta Kostov changed his statements about three times. It is unfortunate that nothing he says can be verified because the airport footage capturing the front door to his office was either deleted or there was never a camera there. Nevertheless, the doctor confirmed a ruptured eardrum and didn't recommend Lars flying for the next 10 days. And Lars was like, no man, I have to get out of here. I can't stay in Bulgaria, I have to go. He could, however, fly at his own risk if he signed a declaration. Lars signed it, but it is unclear why the doctor didn't sign it as it was reported later. Dr. Kostov also stated that Lars strictly refused the painkillers he was offered. Another weird thing that the doctor said, according to some statements, Lars actually didn't take any of the Sevzil tablets, which is weird. He said that he checked and the prescription wasn't used at the pharmacies, but his mother says he told her he took three tablets. It is confirmed later because these tablets are actually missing from the pack. Then, according to the doctor, Lars gets restless and asks to go to the bathroom, telling the doctor he would be right back, but he never comes back. In another version, the doctor said Lars was sitting there and suddenly the door opens and there is a guy in an airline uniform and he peeks in, he's asking about Lars and Lars freaks out, he leaves everything there and he says, I don't want to die here and he runs out. Yet in another version, Lars gets spooked by a construction worker unexpectedly entering the office. Apparently, Lars jumped up and yelled, quote, I can't die here, unquote, before running off. It cannot be confirmed if he said that. There were other versions of what he supposedly said, including just mumbling under his breath something and, quote, I don't want to die here. I have to get out of here, unquote, before dashing off. He leaves all his stuff. He leaves his phone. He leaves his passport. He leaves everything there, his bag, and he runs out. And you can see him in the security footage. He's sprinting out of the airport like he's running for his life. Realizing that something was wrong, at 11 a.m. on July 8th, Sandra reported Lars missing to the German embassy in Sofia. They in turn contact the consulate in Varna and put Miss Mitrova in touch with Lars's mom. They also contact the police and the search for Lars is initiated. She explained to Miss Mitrova that her son sounded strange and his voice sounded panicky. Miss Mitrova got straight on it and started calling the airport to find out what happened to Lars. Also, the spokesperson for the Ministry of Internal Affairs, Ivana Mileva, gave a statement, quote, straight after receiving the reports about Lars Mitang's disappearance from the area of the airport, immediate actions were taken to locate him. The area was searched, video recordings were seized, the people who last saw him were questioned, end quote. The Bulgarian police watched the CCTV footage trying to make some sense of the events. According to witness reports, which were confirmed by security camera footage, Lars ran down the airport hallway, out the door and across the parking lot toward a heap of sand accumulated in the western part of the airport during the construction of the new passenger terminal. From there, multiple witnesses saw him climbing an 8-foot barbed wire fence. At that time, there was a sunflower field, he hopped in there and he disappeared appeared and the sunflowers were like really tall they were about six foot tall due to Lars's suspicious behavior the police suspected that Lars was a drug smuggler or that he had drugs they searched his luggage but found no trace of drugs searches with sniffer dogs were conducted all around the sunflower field and surrounding areas but they found no sign of Lars at 12 p.m. on July 8, Lars's mother finally received information from Miss Mitrova about Lars's last moments at the doctor's office before he vanished. Lars's mom was beside herself with worry. She wanted to travel 
travel to Varna as soon as possible, but she had to arrange her husband's care first. In the meantime, his friends set up a Facebook page, find Lars Mitank, and after several agonizing days, Lars's colleagues, friends and family raised enough money for Sandra to hire a private detective. At last, on July 17th, the private detective Andreas Guti started his investigation in Varna and Sandra Mitang joined him on July 24th. She is shown the CCTV footage from the airport and this is a little strange to me, but she said she was actually relieved to see her son running to safety. We should believe her because she is the one that knows her son the best. In her heart, she believes that he was thinking logically and strategically. The tape Lars's mom was shown was different to the later footage she was shown by the police. She remembers a much longer version of the footage. In it, her son Lars seems to slow down once outside the airport as if he was thinking which way to go next. He then carefully avoids two police cars parked near a bus stop and headed toward a perimeter fence. The PI spoke to the employee that was supposed to enter the doctor's office, but it turned out that the man was not even at work that day. He was not even in Bulgaria. How weird, you guys. The person, if he even exists, is an important witness or even a possible suspect, but he was never identified. Later that day, Sandra, Mr. Gutich, and a newly hired Bulgarian lawyer went to the police station to get an update and to officially report Lars missing. They were shown a list of Lars's belongings that Lars left behind. This part is a little confusing, as it is not clear if they were shown the list at the airport or at the police station. It included two packs of the Sevzil medication with three pills missing. When Sandra checked his bag later, the tablets were missing. Lars was very organized and kept all his receipts in his bag. Sandra also noticed that the receipt from the second pharmacy didn't include the name of the medicine and she thought it was very strange. They returned to the airport the next day to inquire about the missing pills and to their dismay, they were shown the list of Lars's things and the Sevzil seal was no longer on it. Sandra was shocked. She stated, quote, I was appalled. The lawyer as well. He said he could testify that the tablets were listed the day before. Shortly after that, it became horribly loud. I shouted loudly that they should stop and that I was no longer interested in these tablets. I just wanted to get out. The situation felt very uncomfortable and dicey. I just wanted to get out. I thought to myself, there is something wrong here. There is a lot of drama going on here, unquote. After while Sandra let the lawyer go because he started to act suspiciously. He had all kinds of explanation and all kinds of excuses and opinions about her son. At some point he advised her to even stop looking for her son because someone contacted the office and told him to stop. Surprisingly by this time the Sevzil tablet suddenly reappeared. They were apparently in police custody the whole time but Sandra felt like there was a cover-up going on. This case guys is very confusing because we have almost no information from the local police and at the same time there have been many private investigators working on the case and their reports vary and because I don't know whose account is the most accurate I feel it is important to include all of them. According to Rainer they have done everything possible to find Lars. They have covered the entire area around the airport in all directions by plane, drone and thermal imaging camera. Over 100 people in organized search combed the place in detail finding nothing. A search dog picked up Lars's scent and followed it in a certain direction but lost it after a while. They also did something really cool. They had a car with a loudspeaker and they recorded Sandra's voice calling for Lars to come out of the woods. They were thinking if he's hiding and scared if he hears his mom calling him then he will come out but he never did sadly. Meanwhile Detective Gutich says quote I wanted to bring a helicopter and use it to inspect the area around Varna airport. I only needed a corridor for 10 minutes but the police here wouldn't let me because they don't have permission from the airport and everything was blocked. I get such permits all over Europe without a problem unquote. I don't know how one detective was allowed to use a plane and the other detective couldn't use his helicopter that he wanted to pay for. They posted missing posters everywhere, but the local police told them to take it down because of 
environmental reasons which is like uh, so sad because this is for Lars this is for missing person it is not an ad for a business or anything commercial to make money it's about a missing person they could have made an exception so they had to be more creative and started advertising in taxi cabs they spoke to any tv and radio stations and newspapers that were interested in running their story however even today there are still people out there who have never heard of Lars the Bulgarian police Police didn't work with the private detectives. They did their own investigation together with Interpol. But P.I. Rayner didn't see them actively searching. Now this is also very strange, you guys. The airport representatives gave the detectives only a few short clips of Lars's movement around the airport. The reason is unknown. Was it deliberate? Is there a cover-up? Lars spent hours at the airport before he fled. What did he do all these hours? Who did he talk to? We will never know. Detective Rayner investigated Hotel Color. He said said that place was so shady he wouldn't even stay there. It was in this very bad area, lots of criminal activity. There were these tall blocks of flats. There were people coming and going day and night. They were offering sex services there. The hotel had very very thin walls so he could actually hear people talking from downstairs all the way to the third floor and they think that maybe Lars overheard something disturbing. The PI stated that Lars was right to feel unsafe. So what really happened to Lars? This is so confusing you guys. The thing is we only have some pieces of this puzzle available to us. The Bulgarian police don't share any updates on the case and the language barrier makes it difficult to find information from local sources. To this day it is unclear if Lars was really attacked and chased by someone or or was it all just in his head? The biggest question of all is, where is Lars now? Did the bad guys get him? Did he get a ride from the nearby highway A2? Or did he succumb to his injuries and he's still out there in a good hiding spot? Okay, so let's look at some theories. So. First theory is that he is still there. The searchers maybe overlooked him. He could have like hid really, really good in some kind of nook or cranny. When you look at the map, there are a lot of little factories. For some reason, there are a lot of car repair shops. I don't know, like why do you need so many car repair shops in such a small area? There are like warehouses and factories and all these like outbuildings. So he could have even been hidden over there. This looks like a heap of sand, like building site. I don't know he could still be there and maybe searchers overlooked him it is possible it happened before where people searched and they searched the area and the missing person was not there and then years later the remains were found right there but uh, some people said that he's not there because there is not like wilderness around the airport there's just little patches of trees here and there people would have found him by now in bulgaria it's quite common for people to go and pick mushrooms or go fruit foraging in the woods and there's always like lots of people walking around so they would have probably found him by now I'll also wonder if he encountered any bodies of water because many young men meet their end in a river or lake after a night out. It seems like water and young guys there's like a magnet for some reason there are a lot of cases like that guys it is very sad you guys the only body of water would be if he circled around the airport and went to the river but then again his body would have been found. Is it possible that the Bayern football fans that Lars had a disagreement with at the bar had him beaten and later stalked him and threatened his life? This whole theory sounds so far-fetched to me, guys. Apparently, they were questioned by the police and they were cleared. So we don't know. We don't know really anything about them. We don't know what their statements were. We don't know anything. A lot of people think that Lars had an adverse reaction to his Cefzil medication. What is Cefzil 500 and could it have caused Lars's strange behavior? Cefzil 500 is an antibiotic commonly prescribed in Bulgaria but not in Germany. It has been reported to have many side effects including drug-induced psychosis in very rare cases. A Bulgarian pharmacist Rada Bechlivanova said it was possible especially at the high doses that Lars was prescribed, even more so if it was mixed with alcohol or other drugs. Basically all the symptoms that, that Lars had could have been caused by the medicine. We still have many unanswered questions about the medication. Did Lars actually take it? If he did, why did he take so many? I think it's really weird that he took three pills. It was already a high dose of this medicine and he took three pills. He took first one at about 11 or 12 at night. By the time he called his mom later, he told her he already took three. If you take antibiotics, it's usually like one a day or 
two a day. This could have quite possibly caused unwanted side effects. Maybe he didn't understand the dosage written in Bulgarian. And then the way the airport and the police handled the medicine seemed very suspicious to me. With the pills missing at first and also the receipt from the second pharmacy it doesn't state the name of the medicine. It's all very weird, you guys. Lars himself probably felt that something was not right because he kept asking his mother and the airport doctor about the pills. Some people believe that Lars was getting a mental illness, maybe something like schizophrenia, as suspected by Dr. Grande. It is very possible that Lars experienced his very first schizophrenia attack triggered by traumatic events. Except Lars and his family have no history of schizophrenia. Detective Gutich said that he's a thousand percent sure that Lars is experiencing some kind of mental health issues. A normal person would go to the police and report their problems but not Lars, he's just not trusting anybody, he's running off. The next theory is TBI or traumatic brain injury and that he lost his memory. However, it is worth noting that it usually takes a while for symptoms to appear. Detective Rayner, together with mom Sandra believe that Lars is still alive. Till they have proof otherwise, they're looking for a living, breathing Lars. Detective Rayner states, quote, He has lost the basic trust in people. Because of what happened to him, he might have forgotten his name and where he comes from, but he still kept his survival skills, unquote. He might be living out there somewhere without knowing who he is. Maybe he's not in the area anymore. He could have hitchhiked out of there, but I don't know if he would get into a car with a stranger since he was so scared or, and this is like a very sinister theory, somebody was really after him and they might have just got him there, picked him up and took him somewhere. Either way, he could have been out of there very, very quickly. Some people think that maybe he planned to disappear and start a new life, but it would be totally out of his character because he had a great job, he was happy, he had no problems at all, he loved his job, he loved his family, he had a girlfriend, he wanted to buy a house, he had future plans, he just didn't want to disappear, so I don't think he wanted to disappear. Next. Lars could have taken illegal drugs. Apparently there is a big party scene and there are a lot of synthetic drugs in Bulgaria Golden Sands. This would explain his paranoia and dilated pupils. This theory, however, would only be plausible if he was given the drugs without his knowledge because it is totally out of character for Lars to take illegal drugs. He just, he's not that kind of person and his family swear that Lars doesn't take drugs. So if he did ingested. Somebody gave it to him without his knowledge. That's the only way that he could have took it, I think. This is also what Vladislav Bonyev believes. He states that Lars could have unknowingly ingested a long-acting synthetic drug in one of the bars he visited with his friends. He said, quote, sometimes these drugs can cause the so-called frying effect, triggering paranoid reactions that lead to prolonged depressions and fear neurosis, unquote. On top of that, Detective Gutich consulted some German doctors about this and they told him that this drug stays in a human body for up to eight weeks. Most people are okay with it, but sometimes in very rare cases, people, they get like this bad reaction to it where they experience experience paranoia and stress and if they don't get help they pretty much lose their mind so it is very sad that that's what could have happened to Lars. Now many people including many Bulgarians and locals believe the drug mule theory. That's why he was acting strange, that's why he had people after him and chasing him. Even the Bulgarian police operated with this theory at first but they found no drugs in his bag. It is totally out of his character. I don't believe that Lars would be like oh yeah yeah I'm gonna be smuggling drugs. He was not that kind of person. He would not do that. He was not a criminal. But what if you guys, what if he was forced when he was lost that night? What if he was attacked by these drug traffickers? They made him swallow these packets. So of course he would be freaking out and maybe that's why they were after him. Or he could have caused his own ear injury to avoid flying or going to the airport. He was hoping to be admitted to the hospital and gotten out of Bulgaria that way. This would explain most of his behavior and why he insisted his friends go back to Germany without him. Nobody actually saw him getting beaten up, did they? Lars started to unravel when he was not admitted to the hospital. The drug traffickers might have been following him and threatening him for real. That's why he told his mom that they wanted his pills. Or the drugs might have been out of his system by then 
and he got rid of it thinking he was escaping or the drugs like broke inside his body causing the weird symptoms that's why he was out of his mind when the worker entered the doctor's office he literally ran out and sprinted for his life thinking the drug traffickers caught up with him they might have caught up with him after he left the airport and removed him from the area or worse. This is why he told his mother that they won't let him fly or drive. The drug traffickers won't let him leave until he repays his debt. This theory wouldn't be as surprising because Varna is rumored to be the hub of Bulgarian organized crime. Bulgarian mafia called Mutri controls many sectors of the economy, legal and illegal. According to one Reddit user who is a Bulgarian, Varna and the resort are controlled by a crime syndicate known as Tim, T-I-M. He thinks that Lars got involved with the wrong people and he got killed. He stated that the local government has connections to Tim and the last three chief prosecutors were mob affiliated. Mutri reaches everywhere. The airline worker entering the doctor's office at the airport could have easily been part of the whole thing. Lars recognized the threat and ran. The Reddit user stated that most local people believe it's drug and crime related rather than mental breakdowns and hallucinations. So that's interesting that the locals think that he was actually threatened. He had a reason to be afraid. Another possible scenario explaining his behavior could be robbery. The people threatening him after he checked in Hotel Color might have wanted his money. They were like, okay, give us all your money. So he had to give them all the cash, then he had no more money left. Maybe they were like, you can get more money from your mom. He's like, no, I can't. My cards were canceled and everything. They're like, you can do it by Western Union. Just tell your mom to send my money by Western Union, right? I'm not sure I believe this theory just because Sandra herself chose the 500 euros and Lars never said how much he needed plus why did he avoid the police parked outside the airport why didn't he ask for help did he have a reason for not trusting the police and where is he now I've never heard of these guys, but there's another theory that some German doctors had. They suspect misdiagnosing and overcharging for treatment. And if the patient can't pay, they're prevented from leaving, even having their passport confiscated. What if this happened to Lars? Maybe that's why he said, I can't fly or drive and I need more money and stuff like that. So Lars had a negative experience with the hospital doctor and the airport doctor Costa Kostov is very suspicious to me by providing different statements to different people. Maybe that's why the doctor, Dr. Kostov, didn't sign the declaration that he could fly because he wanted more money. This, however, doesn't explain why Lars avoided the police and why he was running out unless he believed that the police were involved. I don't know. But if he was extorted, he didn't have to run out and run off. He could have just paid them to get out of there. But to me, it seems like he was more worried about his life, not about the money. Like, yeah, a little bit about his money, but mostly like he was panicking because he thought he was going to die. Another theory is that Lars could have been the victim of human or he might have been kidnapped for organs. Someone from the doctors or the hospital staff could have been after Lars, taking advantage of his injuries and his confusion. Organized crime might have links to authorities he didn't know who to trust anymore. The man peeking into the doctor's room at the airport might have been there to transport him, or at least that's what Lars was thinking. And that is why he ran out in blind panic. Nobody was chasing him or following him, however. They could have just picked him up from the highway later. But, you guys, I don't think these people would choose a German tourist. They wouldn't want all that publicity because surely they have other people like locals because now there's a spotlight on Varna in this case. There is this theory that I've never heard of in this case. So you guys, tell me in the comments below if you heard this, but it's so scary and so, so, so strange. There is a town called Dobrich near Varna and the, that place and nickname Bermuda Triangle. You know guys where I'm going with this. In 2014, when Lars Midang was seen for the last time, 23 people from Dobrich and the region were missing without a trace. Missing! 
all of them in Lars's age range and all of them gone. Most of them were never found and it was never explained where these people disappeared. Maybe Lars could have been one of them too. It is very difficult to find any information because it's all in Bulgarian. I don't know, it could be connected to the human trafficking or maybe a serial killer. But it's weird that Lars would get all these bad things happening to him. Like he had an injury and the hospital didn't take him in. On top of that, he would be kidnapped by, by human traffickers. It's seems like too much but then again maybe they preyed on him because he was vulnerable who knows guys what do you think also guys i don't know if this is connected or if this could be connected or not but less than a month later on september 6th two young polish tourists vanished and they were later found deceased in the sea could there be a connection there or was it just a tragic accident so i don't know you guys what do you think so these are all the main theories out there but they are mostly explaining lars's behavior but not so much what actually happened to him where is he so have there been any sightings? The Facebook page Find Lars Mitank received a lot of tips. They also have a 40,000 euro reward for any information leading to finding Lars. There were a lot of possible sightings of Lars. Detective Wasserdholm said, quote, Witnesses are convinced they saw the young man, some of whom were face to face with him and got a good look at him, unquote. At the end of September, three people claimed to have seen a man fitting Lars's description in the Varna area. The family is convinced that this man was Lars and after their investigation the PIs confirmed that the man identified was definitely Lars Smitank and although they couldn't locate Lars after that they had proof that Lars was alive three months after his disappearance. What kind of proof? Did they have a picture? I mean it could have been anybody but yeah I really hope that it was him that would be amazing if he was found. His mom Sandra believes that Lars is still out there as there are other cases of missing people that are found years later. He is mentally agile and strong said Lars's mom. Lars is an experienced outdoorsman who could survive in wilderness if needed. Andreas Guttig toured all the small towns around the Varna area assuming that the young foreigner might have found work on a farm where he could live and eat for free. Kai Wasserthal explored the forest near Varna airport with a drone where he noticed several vagrants. They told him about a homeless man who had strayed away from them. That lead has so far yielded no results. A truck driver claimed he picked Lars up hitchhiking in Dresden, Germany. He said the man was disheveled with longer hair and when he saw Lars missing poster later, he was convinced it was him. However, he doesn't remember where he dropped him off. Several German or English speaking confused homeless people were suspected to be Lars, but sadly they were not him. Over the years, Sandra's team found around 15 missing German people. However, none of them wanted to go back home. They just preferred to remain in their new life. The fact that those people are found alive sometimes after so many years gives Sandra hope. She said, quote, I feel my son is still alive. I will try everything I possibly can to find him. I will never give up. In September 2016, there was a tip that sounded very promising. A man matching Lars's description was discovered in Brazil. So many people who saw the photograph of the man were convinced it could be Lars. That was so, so exciting. Sadly though, it was not him. It was another missing young man suffering from schizophrenia. His name is Anton and he's from Canada. Sandra's team was able to reunite this man with his family. The search for Lars has not ended. The case is still open in Bulgaria and the many private detectives are still looking too. Detective Gutich said, quote, It's been a long time. The only chance we have at the moment is to talk to as many Bulgarians as possible. The more people know, the greater the probability that someone will know where he is. I think that Lars is in Bulgaria on the run somewhere. Bulgarians are good. Grandmothers shelter him in their houses and feed him their fruits and vegetables in the gardens. It's a closed circle. German and Bulgarian medical students from the University of Varna sent emails to the mayors of all municipalities in Bulgaria to create a network to search for Lars, end quote. Okay guys, I'm so curious to find out what you think happened to Lars. Please comment your theories below and help to spread the word that this amazing person is still missing. Lars would now be in his 30s. He's blonde and athletic and stands about 5 feet 
9 inches or about 1.8 meters tall. He has brown eyes. If you have any information about Lars, please contact the authorities or leave your tapes on the Find Lars Mitang Facebook page. Okay guys, how did I do with my first ever video? If you did like it, if you think I did good, hit the like button. If you think I didn't do good, please comment down below what I could improve. Also comment down below what cases do you want me to cover next. Okay besties, stay safe guys and I'll see you next time. Bye! Tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way